Hello, and thank you for joining us. I'm Allison Mankey, External Relations Coordinator at IADC. I want to welcome you to our webinar, Showcasing Excellence in Your Community, What You Need to Know About IADC's Excellence in Economic Development Award. Um, during this webinar, we will highlight the application and judging process while touching on what it takes to win. We have a few new categories this year that we will discuss today, and we also plan to save uh, plenty of time for questions at the end, so feel free to ask away by typing your questions into the message box. Uh, we will be answering questions at the end of the webinar. Today, we have um, two presenters, uh, Catherine Timko and John Zakian, or I'm sorry, Catherine Timko and Curtis Wells. Unfortunately, John Zakian cannot uh, make it today, um, but Catherine is the founder and CEO of the Riddle Company. She is highly experienced in retail and business attraction, as well as judging the IDC awards. And this year, she is also serving as IADC's awards advisory committee vice chair. Uh, Curtis is the marketing and events coordinator for the city of Guelph, where he is responsible for overseeing all marketing and communications materials that come out of economic, economic development. Um, the City of Guelph took home a gold award last year for their fantastic Hamlin Creek Business Park sales video. So we'll be talking about that today as well. Uh, to kick things off, we will have Catherine Timko. Thank you. Can you can you all hear me? I guess. Can you hear me, Allison? Yes. So, um, so if it's a little bit uh, if it's a little out of sync, I apologize because I am stepping in for John, uh, who was heading back to. I believe North Dakota, which got hit with a major snowstorm, so they were moving his plane a little bit early. Um, one of the things we really want to encourage people to understand and just kind of re-enumerate re is how important these awards are um, for economic development organizations, for communities, as well as for individual projects. Um, because this is the most prestigious award in economic development worldwide, the only organization that gives out an award of this type. And what we have found is, and what we've heard back from recipients of these awards, is the impact it has on the local community, uh, working with local politicians for organizations often, the recognition they're getting, you know, sometimes it helps to justify um, and to validate the work that, you know, we often do as economic developers that goes unnoticed. So again, it's a very important award. Many of the organizations who have won them um, are brethren, if you will, have been able to use these awards to promote their organization, including to get additional funding and to move certain projects forward. So we're gonna do, we'll walk you through a little bit of the logistics um, uh, for this project. And again, we may be a little out of sync, so I apologize. Um, but the timeline is critical. Uh, we've got an early bird deadline that'll save you a little bit of money, um, which is in April. The final deadline is May 3rd and I implore you, if you don't get your, your submission in on that date, it will not be considered. And very much like other organizations, we have to hold those deadlines for the staff to be able to handle, we get over 500 submissions for them to be able to handle everything. But judging is in June. It is a very laborious process. Many of us walk out of there bug guide because we've judged maybe 100 different uh, award submissions overall. It's a very difficult process for us, but we also, all of us take it very seriously. And the judges are peers within the industry. Um, you'll be notified the award ceremony will take place in, uh, in October. Uh, you'll be notified in advance of the conference. Um, we certainly do encourage everybody who wins an award, if you can attend the conference, it's great because there's a great opportunity for recognition there. Um, also, we've had many communities and organizations who have brought elected officials, uh, which is nice because you get that recognition as well and you're able to extend that within the community. Um, one of the things that has happened this year, and it's really in response to changes that have happened in our industry and in the economy, is we've adjusted some of the categories. Overall, there are 34 categories, and they're in the five main groups that are highlighted here. They're broken out by population categories. Uh, and I encourage you, if you're looking at one of the categories and you're not sure, reach out to IEDC. 
At times we have found ourselves judging something that we actually realize is in the wrong category. And on the floor when we're judging, we are able to move it, but it can make it a little difficult, particularly if that category has already been judged. Then they have to go back and reevaluate it. So if you're not sure, check it, run it through IEDC. Um, the same thing with the categories, uh, or the population categories, excuse me. Um, they're broken down. We know they're not perfect, uh, particularly for populations between 25,000 and 200,000 and 200 and 500,000, um, that there can be differential. So what we always emphasize for folks is to make sure you're very clear in your submission, which we'll get into a little bit later. There are three different categories, the gold, silver, or bronze. We also have an opportunity if we find something that doesn't fit in that, we can give um, an award of recognition. Uh, and the key is the best in show award. Every gold award is considered for this. Uh, and the winners in the past, um, all of the judges have to agree to give that award. Again, it's a very prestigious award you've got to bring home to your community. Um, we're going to briefly walk through the, the new categories. Again, as I had previously mentioned, these categories are have been changed slightly and added because of changes that are going on in our industry. One of the first ones is the resiliency, recovery, and mitigation. Um, collectively, our committee decided that this was important because we were seeing submissions mostly in response to disasters that have happened across the country. You know, you've got Sandy that really devastated the Northeast, uh, what happened in Louisiana and Houston in, in recent past. So we've added this category because many of the communities, many of the economic development organizations and public-private partnerships have done, you know, incredible jobs of responding to this. Um, so we felt this onto its own is important to be able to identify and to recognize. Um, creative financing, um, this category really is responding to what we're dealing with um, in the new categories of financing. Um, you know, there's all new techniques of financing and now we've got opportunity zones uh, which my guess is where we won't see submissions. There's only been one or two investments made to date. But the world of finance has changed dramatically since 2008. And we realized that our previous category was a little bit limited. And frankly, it's, it's kind of like the old guy in the room uh, with the millennials standing by. So we recognize the need to do this. Our committee took a lot of time to make certain that we identified um, elements of that and what we consider creative financing that communities are using um, that are inclusive. And then the next one is innovation programs and initiatives. And this is responding to what we're all seeing in our markets, whether it's local entrepreneurship, um, you know, the tech, you know, startups, FinTech, as well as organizational structures such as accelerators, incubators, and the advent of growth we're seeing in that, uh, even the WeWorks of the world. So we they were kind of stuck in the mud in some of the other categories. So we created this one because um, again, in response to what's going on. The next is really uh, some simple ones where we change names um, um, of categories, um, digital media, and again, responding, we had initially called it new media, but we realized it really wasn't appropriate. Neighborhood and re re retail development, excuse me, is critical. A lot of what we were seeing in retail uh, or of retail projects were being submitted in neighborhoods. So we decided to expand it um, to make certain that that's inclusive. And then talent development and retention. Uh, many communities are facing, particularly facing talent attraction and development issues um, with what's going on in unemployment and, and growth in this country. So we thought this was important. We saw some great examples, which is where this evolved into. And then Allison, I'm gonna turn it back to you for Economic Development Week. So we do have one category that is for uh, Economic Development Week which this year will be uh, May 6th through 11th. This is a separate category with separate judging criteria. Um, you, uh, it's based around the projects that people have during Economic Development Week. So because of the lateness of um, that week in comparison to the deadline, we do have a special deadline of May 31st. Um, you will want to check out our website to uh, take a look at um, you know, what people have submitted in the past and uh, what the actual criteria for that specific category is. We also have um, eligibility. Uh, any organization with a qualifying project is eligible to submit an award. Um, if the promotion you have is still active, uh, it is also eligible. 
um, but you will want to take a look, especially with the program categories, that there are a number that have a three-year minimum of activity before you can submit it. Um, so just be sure to be checking uh, the qualifications for the different categories. I also just wanted to briefly touch on the pricing per entry. Um, these are all within the entry forms and online as well, uh, but if you are a, communi a community with a population below 25,000, uh, you will get that flat 110 rate. Um, if you are a member, um, you can see if you hit the early bird deadline, you'll be able to also get that 110 rate. Um, so just be sure to check the uh, date that you're sending it in. Um, if you postmark it by that early bird deadline, um, you will get the rate. Up next, we have uh, the city of Guelph. Um, I'm going to play the video first and then hand it over to Curtis. Uh, we may have a little bit of lag with the video due to how um, GoToWebinar works. Um, but we will also be sharing the link uh, with everyone who is attending the webinar so that you can have um, take a take a look at it on YouTube. <laughs> So we did have a little bit of lag on GoToWebinar, but we will be sharing that link. And um, I hope you were able to get a good idea of the video. So I will be turning it over to Curtis now. Thank you, Allison. So first off, I'd just like to thank IADC for select selecting us to participate in this webinar. Um, it's an honor to receive an award from IADC, and I'm very happy to be speaking today. I'd also like to thank my fellow speakers. Um, so as you saw the video there, that's the Hanley Creek Business Park sales video for our phase one of our city owned lands. We won the gold excellence for that one. And then we also won two others last year. We won a silver excellence uh, for our economic snapshot publication. And we won the bronze excellence award for our uh, downtown CIP. So just a brief introduction of myself before I get into things. So I'm Curtis Wells, the Marketing and Events Coordinator for Economic Development at the City of Guelph. Uh, we're located in Ontario, Canada. So I've been with the city for almost two years now, and prior to that, I was with the City of Brampton. So when we were putting together our uh, submission for the Hanley Creek Business Park sales video, our ultimate goal was to promote our remaining phase one lands in the city-owned um, business park. So our previous video that we had was um, 
dated. And so we were looking at uh, a new way to present our, um, our available land. And, you know, after discussing as a team, we decided that our further, um, that our objectives were to uh, showcase like the park's tenants, um, promote the ideal location of the business park, and promote our great city. So uh, the great thing about the businesses in the Hanlon Creek Business Park and businesses, businesses in Guelph in general is that they love to work with us to promote the city. That's always a good thing because it makes, makes our lives a lot easier. Uh, when producing the video, we made sure to feature a few uh, of the businesses within the business park, um, such as Worth Canada, their Canadian headquarters, uh, Fusion Homes, and Hallwell Mutual Insurance Company. And we also wanted to make sure the video was general enough that it provided enough information for someone who has never visited Guelph to get a snapshot of the city. So while promoting the lands, we also wanted to make sure that if you had never been to Guelph before, you kind of had a, an idea of some of the uh, benefits that we offer businesses. And so moving on to the impact of the video. So to date, the video has garnered more than 42,000 views between Facebook and YouTube, so on both our, our Facebook channel and our YouTube channel. Uh, we promoted this through our Hanlon Creek Business Park website, so it's currently listed on there, um, through various digital channels that we use, as well as in our Hanlon Creek Business Park sales package. So we pass this on to clients when they are um, interested in the, in the land, as well as more information. So as a result of the video, we've had uh, several inquiries, um, both direct and indirect, and um, and to date, some of that land is currently under contract with hopeful closing soon, and that's all been since the release of the video. We've also gained a lot of leads uh, from investors and developers that have inquired about Hanley Creek Business Park, and they don't necessarily fit within the business park. So we've moved that we've looked at other opportunities such as land or existing buildings within the city. So there's been a lot of indirect kind of exposure, which has helped with our um, sales of land within the city. And just kind of on a note of the impact, uh, I just wanted to even speak about the impact of the IDC awards. So uh, just having just winning these awards last year. Uh, They've been great. The, the awards have been great for us. We distributed a citywide news release to all media outlets, and we also leveraged our um, digital ribbon, which you receive if you win an award. Um, we've posted that on our website and on our creative materials to show off to show off the awards that we've won. So we try to maximize it because you know it's IEDC awards are, are prestigious, and so we're, we're very proud to have them, and we want everyone to know that we have won a few. Um, now talking about the participants for the video. So we work closely with multiple departments um, within City Hall here on a daily basis and are always looking, are always working to uh, build partnerships both internally and within our community. So we um, talk to various departments here at the City of Guelph just to get their input as well. Just so everything, sometimes when you're too close, you don't see from the different perspectives. So we want to make sure we talk to enough people to get their insight. And we also, as I mentioned earlier, use this as an opportunity to get uh, some of the current tenants of Hanley Creek Business Park involved. Uh, the businesses enjoy this because it provides additional exposure and they also have a piece that they can share to attract others to Guelph. So uh, whether it be suppliers or um, whatever it may be, they can share the video and you know they're proud of it, they're part of it. So that's kind of what we were aiming for there. And then we also worked with Ward One Studios. So Ward One Studios is the company uh, within Guelph here that put together the video for us. So we we met with them, we gave them our objectives, kind of told them the direction we wanted to take this video. And from there, they helped us make it a reality. So um, they coordinated our drone footage to help make the video even better. So it's great local companies like this that help make these, um, promotional pieces uh, happen. So we're very, very proud to have them. And then now moving on to the creative element of the video. So one of the creative elements is lifespan. So we want we, we designed this video so that it wouldn't date itself. And you know this is 
the aim with most of our materials because as you know um, videos and just materials in general can be pricey so don't want to waste dollars and so we wanted to make this something that we wouldn't have to keep reinventing every time a piece of land sold or if we had to sever some land whatever or what have you so um, what we've what we've done is we've we spoke with uh, Ward One right from the beginning and let them know that this was something we wanted to look into is how can we make it last as long as it possibly can. And so we've already had to adjust it one time and how the video has been designed is that we could pull blocks of land out and without and some of the design or um, creative elements out of the video without actually affecting the entire video so that all it is re-upload and it could keep going versus having to reinvent the video every single time as i mentioned it could be pretty cost cost um it could cost quite a bit we also used um drone footage for this video to give kind of a bird's eye view of the available land and as you know drone footage is increasingly becoming popular as it adds a unique element to videos and allows you to show more detail and bigger picture shots which are helpful for um for people to envision kind of what their building could look like there and the other, the, another creative element is how informative the video is. So we tried to put as much information into this video as we could without inundating it to the point that it wasn't effective. You don't want text just all over the screen. A video is more about the visuals, but we wanted to make sure that whether someone was listening to it with sound or without sound, they can gather the information that they needed. And they could also get kind of a snapshot of what Guelph is and what the business park provides. And the connectivity to our other collaterals, um, we provide enough information that um, we design the video so that it connects well with our other collaterals, such as our marketing materials and our sales flyers. So we, we want to make sure that if you see one piece, you can see the connectivity, and it's not it's not totally different. We want to make sure that you, you um, that potential investors can draw the connection between the two. And my final slide here is on some tips for when you're putting together your submissions. So one of them is take your time and put full effort into submissions. So what I mean by this is just put your all into the submission because winning these kinds of awards is very valuable for further putting your area on the map. So read, those, read the questions fully, even revisit them a couple of times to ensure the information you're adding is the best that it can be. One thing we did last year when we were putting these together is we, we would work on them and then we'd take a day or two just to kind of clear our minds and then revisit and just read the questions over again and just add where applicable or change just to make sure you're being as clear as possible and that you're putting your um, most putting all your effort into it. Um, another one is be clear in your submissions. So just be very clear in answering all the questions and make sure that you're actually answering the questions versus just putting information down on paper. Um, general rule of thumb is that I use is if you're close to the project, then you tend to know it inside out and you may use terms or references that won't make sense to everyone. So be as clear as possible and ensure that whether it's someone that knows everything about um, your area or if it's someone that knows absolutely nothing about it, they can kind of see the, the full picture and the questions are fully answered. And then the last, my last tip is just brag about your community. We all know our specific community has many strengths, so make sure where it makes sense that you're bragging about the different items throughout the questions. Don't be afraid to put some of the highlights in there and ensure that it actually relates to the question, but you know, brag about your community, be proud. And now I'll hand it off to Catherine. Thank you, Curtis. Um, you gave some really good tips. Um, um, and I'll just kind of reiterate some of that. But the first thing we want to talk about is the the benefits and the tools that the winners are provided when they do win. Um, there is a, a program at the conference that's very well attended. Um, all awardees are recognized. Uh, you have an opportunity to get photographs. Um, you will also get your award there. Um, you get the ribbons there. Prior to this, when you get notified, you will be getting a press release, which we always encourage people not to send them out. Um, in fact, you get shamed a little if you send them out in advance of actually getting the award. 
many communities, like I think what Curtis was saying, you can take that and customize it to yourself. We strongly encourage you to send it out to everyone in your community, as well as national media that might be relevant. Um, and because many of the awardees are sending it out at the same time, what I have personally found on behalf of some of my own clients is I wait a month. So you send it out. So you're getting a little bit different news uh, cycle than everyone else coming in. Um, but there are some great opportunities, again, for us to market this. Put it out on social media as well, because I do think getting the coverage can really help your organization achieve some of the goals that you're looking to do. And this just gives you some samples of, um, or examples of samples of marketing materials that have been used. Um, you can actually pull it up on social media if you do a little bit of a research tool, and you'll see some other examples. So I want to walk through the judging process. As I had mentioned earlier, it's a very onerous um, experience for those that have judged, and I've done this for about 10 years. It's one day, it's very intensive, and as I said, the judges take this very seriously. Um, you get 50 to 60 judges that'll participate. Um, we have judges coming in from all over the country. Um, they're all IEDC members. They're all working in, or have made, some of them are recent retirees, but have been working in the industry. Um, and they try to match them up. The judges are well matched to what the categories that they are judging. And uh, you, you, you learn a lot. Um, I have never walked away from a judging process where I haven't learned a great example or some best practices. Um, and then there is the website and the new media categories are actually viewed offline. So as Curtis said, you need to make certain what you're presenting is, is, is very thoughtful, well done, and very concise. Um, as we're gonna go to the next slide, um, from a personal standpoint, one of the challenges I have found over the 10 years, and I'll give an example, is, is what Curtis had mentioned, is not being completely clear. Assume the judges know nothing. Um, we had one town that we were judging. We thought it was Newark, Del or Newark, New Jersey, and we discovered it was Newark, Ohio. I think it was either Newark, Ohio, or Newark, Delaware. I honestly don't remember. But because there's so many cities that have the same name, sometimes we may have Think, we may think it's something else. So we're evaluating it from a different set of standards and our own biases. So always be clear, assume whoever's reading your paper uh, may not know anything about your community or your industry. Um, the other thing that I implore everyone who submits a, a, for an award is make certain there are no typos and there are no major errors. We have had cases in the past where we've actually um, you know, rescinded, and whether the project is good or not, it's still a reflection on the industry. And, and the judges have made the decision dealing with staff that you know, this, cat, this individual submission is really not award worthy, even though the project may have been. And we've you know, notified the, the organization and given them an opportunity to resubmit in the following year. But it's important you check all of the criteria, and as Curtis said, go through it a few times, um, make certain that you're clear about what your measurable objectives are, what your goals are, what you were trying to achieve, and how you've actually accomplished that. Um, using metrics is critical because many of us use metrics in our daily life, uh, in our professional life, to really understand if something is working or not. And I encourage you, as many as you can, uh, that you can do that, you know, whether it's hits on a website, reviews on a video, whether it's, you know, business outreach, you know, attendees at a meeting. This allows us to get an understanding. Um, and it's really important for small communities or young organizations to do this, because once we know that, we can also understand that in a different light. Um, the other thing that is really important is use visual. I, I encourage everybody who has asked my opinion on how to do an award, whether it's for IEDC or another organization, Nothing tells a story better than a picture. And having images, whether it's of an event, if it's of businesses you're working with, it's your staff, if you're doing a site tour, whatever it is, the more images you have, whether it's collateral material, logos, you know, brochures as well, but having that kind of imagery is really important. And it also helps the judges. And again, you're, you're in a very, very condensed day of evaluation. Uh, it allows us to have a better understanding, particularly if there's some information we may not understand, or as Curtis had mentioned, you're dealing with um, some vernacular that may be a little bit different to us. And because it is an international process, we may be dealing with you know, acronyms that we're not familiar with. Um, 
then what we're looking for coming on to the next on completing the entry is make really pay attention to what those instructions are, the categories. If you're not certain about a category, I implore you again, reach out to IEDC. We've had people submit for one that we've had to move and challenge there can be that the category has already been judged. Um, so you may not have an opportunity to be evaluated um, well, if you will. Uh, the population categories, again, if you've got any questions about that, and don't miss the deadline. I personally, for another organization, missed the deadline by five minutes, and there's nothing worse than doing that. Um, my, my suggestion is aim for May 2nd, so just in case there are any issues, there's another blizzard, you know, FedEx decides to take off on a strike, that your information is there. With that, I think we're turning it back to Allison. Uh, so yeah, thank you, Catherine, and thank you, Curtis. Um, it looks like at the moment I have a question, um, and I'll be able to help with answering this, but uh, if you do have a question, you can go ahead and type it into the question box at the bottom. Um, so the question we have right now is, can a university office that is a member apply for the award for partnerships with education institutions? That is, could our university office be the applicant or does it need to be our municipal partner? Um, so if you, there are a number of partnership awards. Um, usually with these partnership awards, uh, well, we'll either have um, one organization submit for the actual award um, that is part of the partnership or um, there will be like a, a collaborated um, submission. Um, so in this case, yes, uh, if it is a uh, eligible program, you can uh, submit it as a university. Um, Catherine, I don't know if you have uh, anything to say about partnership awards or how we do the judging for those, um, but the answer. Um, well, yeah, and I had a client who was a university and they were one of the divisions within the university business school um, and they had multiple partners, but they did take the lead and they did the submission, so you can do it from that type of an organization. Um, I highly recommend, again, making certain your partners know that you're doing this, because there is one instance that I have memory, have memory of um, where two different organizations submitted the same thing, and we were able to just combine it into one. So. Okay, um, so we have another question. Uh, what designates a qualifying program? Um, at least uh, from my end, you'll be able to look at uh, what we have online and in the entry forms to see um, if your program will qualify for it, um, what, what category the program will really fit into. You'll have to look through the descriptions. Um, one of the main things that you want to make sure is when it's uh, in the program categories that uh, you want to look to see if there is the three years that it needs to be running or if um, it's a category that doesn't necessarily need that. Um, and Catherine, you can also feel free to jump in at any point with helping answering these questions. Um, I think you've covered that one. And are governmental municipali municipalities able to submit projects and programs for consideration? Um, uh, Absolutely. Again, uh, submissions from pretty much everywhere, as long as the program or the. Um, okay, um, so could you go into more detail on the new digital media category? Uh, what does this encompass? Uh, social media, paid online advertising, websites, et cetera. Um, I will say uh, that we have three categories under um, like the new media and internet section. Uh, so there are two categories that are the general purpose website and also the special purpose website. So digital media pretty much covers everything that's not the websites. Um, if you have um, Everything you've kind of listed there, uh, Catherine. Again, if you want to go into more detail, but social media. Yep. Part of this, yeah. Part of this came about um, because you know many organizations and communities are now doing Instagram campaigns, Twitter campaigns, even for like the talent attraction, doing LinkedIn campaigns. So all of those are eligible. 
uh, if you're doing something on Facebook, that is also part of this because we recognized that you know the world has changed and some of the original criteria rather um, were a little bit outdated. So again, I, if you have a question about a specific campaign, reach out to IEDC and they'll be able to let you know if it, which category it fits. Okay, um, so for category 10, or if, probably for any categories, do we need to submit six different or five different USB drives, uh, the same number of copies as requested? Um, so you want to send the copies, but you uh, only need to send one USB drive if you have um, everything on it. Um, some people do send in multiple USB drives, but uh, to make it easier, um, as long as you have the five physical copies, we just need the one USB drive. And make sure you put a label on that USB drive just in case it falls out of the envelope. Um, it's happened during judging, so we have to scramble sometimes to figure out what it belongs to. And I will say from uh, experience in uh, receiving these submissions, um, putting a USB drive in like a, an envelope that doesn't have any kind of support or padding, um, those frequently get lost in the mail. Um, so you'll, you'll want to be careful about how you're packaging the USB drive with your submission. Yeah. So uh, we did five small short videos that I'll link together, but we pulled them out separately to use on a specific website pages. Do I need to combine them all into one video or send all five separate? Um, so if you are sending them uh, with the, like on the USB, um, it's all right to send them separately. We will be able to play them for the judges. Um, you just wanna make sure that they are all easily accessible uh, if it's all for one project. Um, so basically, when you're putting your submission together, uh, an important thing to think about is how easy is it going to be for the judges to just basically open your submission and uh, look through it and see everything right away. Um, so that would be a big important thing. It's just making sure everything is accessible. And, and I might recommend um, that you combine them if you can, if that's easy to do again, in the expediency of time as well, so that we're not having to, you know, when, when they judge something like that, if it's on a laptop, on a table, if it's all together, we can just do it smoothly. Um, there's no interruption versus having to close, open, close, open. Um, so when for any element of these submissions, um, make it as easy as you can. Keep the, you know, the KISS methodology will work very well here, the keep it simple, stupid sometimes. Um, again, because it is a very intense day, and again, so using it, think about it that way with these five. Okay, um, so I, I might have missed a few things here, but I think we're pretty much ready to wrap up. Um, if you do have any um, questions, uh, any anything that you want to just figure out, um, you can always just email me at awards at iedconline.org um, and I'll be able to give you more detailed instructions um, than over just the webinar here. Uh, but otherwise, um, unless there are any other questions or uh, anything else, I think I would like to uh, wrap up here. We do have a couple more webinars that you might want to look at coming uh, in March, April, and May, uh, and if you want to register online at our site today, they fill up pretty quickly. Um, thank you to everyone attending today's webinar. We hope you found the information useful. Uh, we will be sending out uh, some information as well as the link to uh, Curtis's video um, after the webinar is over, and uh, we will also be putting this up on YouTube. So thanks again for attending and have a great rest of your day.